guys, Jeremy here and welcome to another edition of Tool Time Tuesday. Like I said we're going to do, we're going to start these Tool Time Tuesdays off showing viewers knives. This week the knife that we're going to take a look at is a gentleman by the name of Jonathan. And Jonathan is a guy from Finland and he sent me a picture of these three knives that he'd made from a circular saw blade. And I think that's really awesome because one of the big hurdles that I hear a lot, uh, the hard parts about knife making or getting into knife making is where do you find the steel. And obviously saw blades can be a really great source of steel. Uh, if you know a bit about the saw blade, the, the, the makeup of it, it can really aid in the heat treating and the tempering and stuff. but. Ultimately, if you can't get really good steel that you know everything about, a saw blade's a great place to start and just get doing it. So I think these knives look fantastic, Jonathan. Good job. And uh, keep at it. I really like your classic, uh, what do you call it, like a Scandinavian style slash, you know, classic bushcraft. They're very elegant, uh, classic shaped knives and I really like them. I think they look great. So thank you so much for sending that to me. Now for today's video, I shot it earlier this morning when I was at my dad's place and it's just a tour of my big toolbox and I do a little introduction in that video so I'm just going to stop talking right now. Alright guys, so today I'm going to take you and give you a tour of my Pride and Joy toolbox. This is a Mac Tech series, I believe it's like a 1000 or something. But I was watching uh, yesterday, I watched uh, NYC CNC's video about toolbox and shop organization. And this was actually a video I'd wanted to do, it was like the first or second day of my 30 day video challenge. And the SD card I used died and I lost all the footage so I wasn't able to share that. I was frustrated, I, I didn't want to reshoot it again because I was a little ticked off. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly show you my toolbox. Uh, again, this has really nothing to do with knife making, so if uh, you're going to find it boring, just go ahead and skip this video. But I'm going to just show you quickly the contents of the box. Now, keep in mind, I, I've pillaged this box quite a bit to take some of these tools out to my shipping container shop out of my place. So this is in my dad's shop right now. Um, I come out here to do a lot of work on vehicles and stuff like that, and so it's kind of nice to have these tools here. I'm just going to give you a quick look at the box. I'll show you what's inside of it, and then um, I'll highlight a couple of awesome tools uh, that if you've never seen them, I couldn't recommend you buy them higher than what I'm going to show you here. So let's get right into it. Now, the one thing you'll notice over these Mac and Snap-on toolboxes compared to, uh, you know, ones you, any other brands like Craftsman or Home Depot, typically their drawers are much bigger. So, I mean, when you open up that, that's, that's a nice wide drawer and it works awesome. So, I guess getting right into it, obviously this is the socket drawer. You use sockets all the time. Uh, some of the recent purchases I never had a chance to use are these swivel impacts, Snap-on. I pay a lot of money for these, but I wait for the stuff to go on sale and snatch it up. Other than that, uh, a lot of my impacts are kind of no-name stuff, and then a lot of my sockets are Craftsman, and I bought Craftsman tools when I was young, like, I think 16 years old, I bought my first full mechanic set, and I still have a lot of them. They work really well. Uh, some Mastercraft for certain things, like uh, stuff I didn't use a lot, like socket Allen keys and stuff like that. Um, Various extensions. Uh, let's see, we got Snap On 3/8 digital torque wrench right here. Uh, bought that used on the truck, but it was a good deal and it was certified and calibrated. And then a few months later, I bought a half inch version of the digital torque wrench. These were awesome. And then we'd get them certified. The company would pay to have them certified every now and then. It's out of date now, but for torquing the wheels on my vehicles, I'm sure it's plenty good for me still. So, uh, got some long, uh, long ratchets here. Um, I really, really, really began to enjoy these soft-handled snap-on ratchets with the pivoting heads. And so I got a bunch of those. Uh, this was a Mac one. I got it for dirt cheap. Uh, usually I don't have any Mac tools except for the fact that I think I got this on clearance for like 17 bucks or something. Um, so there's just my basic socket set in this drawer. Next drawer will be my wrenches. And uh, working with hydraulics on these big frack units that we built, we had a lot of really odd fittings. So I was slowly building up my collection of these snap-on four-way offset wrenches. And they're nice because, I mean, this is inch and a half both ends, but each end is different. And so you've actually got four different angles of reach depending on how you flip the wrench and which end you use. These things are awesome, super pricey. Uh, you consider they're about $100 per inch. So, you know, a half inch is gonna be about 50 bucks. This one wrench here is about $150. Um, Again, I bought some on deals. I bought uh, this whole set right here from 7 8 to, uh, was it 3 8 I ended up getting this for 100 bucks on garagejournal.com. That's an awesome place to buy snap-on tools. There are deals to be had there. Not all of them, but there are some. I've got my Blue Point uh, ratchet wrenches, my snap-on. I really like these size. These aren't the full size, but they're not quite the stubbies. 
they're in between. And for me, for most of the stuff I do, I can put way too much torque on a nut or a bolt with a long handled wrench, like, you know, their standard length. So I really like these. They allow me to get into tight spots. And then, I mean, come on, if you've got any strength at all, you know, to put to torque on a, a 3 8 bolt, uh, you can do it certainly by hand with a wrench this size. So I definitely had switched out to these and I preferred these over uh, the full length uh, box end wrenches. So. This was my uh, basic wrench door for the, the common stuff, not the super big stuff, but this was the stuff I was always using. And of course we got our Allen wrenches, metric, imperial, and some stubbies for metric, helps you get into little places. Um, some of these wrenches I actually found, like this one, and this one, these were snap-ons. I found these under a baggage conveyor in Las Vegas. We tore it out an old carousel and these were laying there, so that's kind of cool. A lot of my tools I've somehow gotten free and found over the years, but... Then this next set here was my crescent wrench drawer and uh, pretty big crescent wrenches here. My smallest in this, well I've got this 10 inch here. Uh, but then we go the 15, this is what, the 18 inch, uh, 24 inch, and then the one that I recently purchased that I loved was this 30 inch. That is a formidable crescent wrench. I love these things. Fortunately, they're getting a little rust in here, a little condensation in, in my dad's shop here. But one thing I really liked about these Blue Point over the snap on versions is that the ends tapered down and they worked really good for putting a, a pipe over top as a snipe. Now, I know that's not proper protocol, you're not supposed to do that, but you know, when you're working on something and you can't get anything to work, I mean, that's what you do. Uh, these were the standard ones, they kind of flare out. They, you can get a pipe on them, but these ones were just awesome. And in fact, I actually have two pipes here. And at work, they said it was kind of okay if we did it as long as we put a bolt through. So this pipe here will actually slide over this uh, 24 inch crescent wrench. And then I would just put this little uh, bolt through with a little nut, just so that it wouldn't slide off, you know, if something slipped or anything like that. A few custom wrenches I made for some of the hydraulic pumps that we we worked on. Uh, made this one as well. Uh, there's no way to get at them without a special tool like this. So, end up making a few. Now, this is a tool that I suggest everybody purchase that does any work on anything with sizable fasteners. Um, these are called the. Uh, this is the rigid E110. Um, uh, typically like a plumbing thing, like I think for like different sink flanges and stuff like that. But these things are awesome. They've got a huge. Huge reach, I don't know exactly how big they go to, uh, but they get nice and big, you can put a snipe on them, and a super handy tool to have. Um, sometimes if there's something we have to take a look at out in the yard, uh, I just grab a couple crescent wrenches and this one, because this would allow me to undo some really large hydraulic hoses, uh, deadhead them if we had to test certain circuits, so this was a tool that I used all the time. You can tell this is a fairly well-worn tool as well. Wrenches, that's what I kept in that drawer. And this was all my screwdriver stuff and pliers. So I've got, you know, my basic Phillips and slot head screwdrivers, a set of Klein nut drivers. Uh, these are Imperial. I didn't really use metric that much. And then some random sets for different things. Um, cutters for a lot of the hoses we did for airlines. Now these, these are champions right here. This is a tool that I highly recommend. These are the Nipex. I don't exactly know what this one's called, but they're basically kind of like a... a a pump wrench or you know water pump pliers but these are actually made for fasteners for bolt heads and, and nuts and stuff so the jaws stay parallel on them and they're adjustable so they get quite nice and large and I ended up using these way more than I ever did crescent wrenches because they're so handy the other thing I really like about these is that their design is that as long as you're clamping and you're putting pressure down this way they will actually self-lock. So once you're on a nut or a bolt or whatever you're trying to tighten up, you don't even need to hold the bottom handle. It will self-lock and you just grab it and pull, which is really nice because a lot of the other style, they'll start to come out. And so you have to keep force on them to keep them together, plus the force you're using to turn the fastener. These things are awesome. And I've got a full set of these. They're not cheap again. I think the full set was about $300. Uh, so I got the large one there all the way to this little guy here. Um, super, super handy tools. I use these all the time and uh, for like vehicle emergency kits, I keep one of these over a crescent wrench because they're so fast. Also they work, shoot, I wish I had a fastener I could show you. Uh, let's go over here. Okay, so I'm not actually gonna adjust this. This is my dad's uh, lawnmower here, but I'll show you the concept behind these. As you tighten them up, they will, oh that's actually just tightening, they will self-lock so I don't, you see I'm putting pressure on there and they're not opening up like that. So they self-lock like that and then the thing I really like about these over crescent wrenches is that when you have them set properly, 
they open up just enough that you can simply spin them around and grab the other side. So it's not like, you know, crescent wrench, you're taking it off and on every time. These will actually open up enough, so you're tightening it and you need to go around to get another, another bite on it. You can just do that without actually having to take this off of the nut. So super handy tools, absolutely love these things. And then another one made by Cobra, uh, sorry, by Nipex, are these Nipex Cobras. And they're the same kind of a deal. They self-tighten, they self-lock, and these things bite way harder than your standard pipe wrench or your water pump pliers, I mean. And again, they're very quick adjustable like this. Just adjust them, open them up, and that's a fairly decent size. These I use for a lot of hydraulic fittings that didn't, uh, didn't have a good place to get a bite on or they didn't have any... Uh, machine surfaces to grab uh, amazing the the torque that you can grab and the bite you can get with these right here and again i've got the full sets i've got the large all the way down to the small if i were to go between one of these sets though i still prefer these ones use these ones all the time uh handy little tool are these uh, double jointed long reach needle nose pliers that just allows this whole thing to stay nice and narrow and not get big in order to open up the the end so if you're reaching down grabbing something adjusting something these things are awesome these are again the mac these are made uh from mat truck and they were like cheap i think i paid like 20 bucks for those get your basic you know other pliers um assortment of vice grips i didn't use a lot of vice grips but i always had a few of them and then some tin snips for various things we did and then these blue point heater hose pliers a lot of times we'd have to change out uh, the Wabasto, which is like a circuit heater for your cooling system to, to warm the trucks and the engines up. And sometimes if you're troubleshooting or you have to swap it out, these are nice because you can just pinch the heater hose in your vehicle or whatever you're working on. And you don't actually have to drain the coolant system. Pinch either end of the part you're taking off and it'll isolate it, hook it back up, and boom, you're done. So these are super handy. And for the work that we needed, that we did, I needed four. And this was the only size I ever used. Super, super handy tool to buy. And then some random, every now and then you get a weird Torx fastener or something like that. So I've just got some really crappy brand uh, Torx, uh, Torx screwdrivers in there. And then we go down to, um, there's large snap ring pliers, very large set of hydraulic hose picks. Uh, this was $20 on the Mack truck, that was a hot deal. Now this here is, in my opinion, one of the best values that Snap-on has. This is a thread restore kit. Yeah, thread chaser kit so it's not necessary for tapping brand new holes but sometimes if you got an old fastener that's a little bit gummed up uh, a blind you know a hole that that's got junk in it you need to get cleaned up these are awesome because they fit on your your wrenches you don't need tap handles for these and you just chase them up and down and this entire set regular price was $99 Canadian to me that's a pretty hot deal also comes with these uh, thread files metric imperial and the handles that go on them so you've got your metric here and you've got your imperial fine and your imperial course this set i couldn't live without this i use this all the time and for 99 dollars, this is a hot deal then i've just got a mastercraft tap and die set they work okay they're not great uh, you got to be careful with them. You'll snap them in the hole you're trying to do, but just as something to have on hand, it was good. I also had a different assortment. I've taken that to my other shop, but of actually high quality like Dormer and SKF taps. Uh, but this was just nice because I had every single size covered for the odd time when I need to tap a hole. And then here we get into slightly larger wrenches. And so this was my first set of offsets. And this is an inch and a half, but you see that this end is standard here. This is the exact same angle on this end as the standard wrenches have. So really the only offset you have is this one if you switch it two ways as compared to the snap-on. So you see the snap-on head is slightly different than your standard box head angle. I don't know what the angles are, I don't remember, but way more useful, especially for some of these big rigs that we were building, these frack units and stuff. There were some tight spots and this would not get the job done, this would. So after boring these tools off some of the guys I worked with over and over and over again, you know, I had a rule, if you bore it three times, you need to buy yourself. So that's why I eventually started buying all these. Even though they're pricey, they let me do my job much better. Uh, and also without bugging my coworkers. So. So these are those, I still kept these because these are the tools I would lend out to people. And then I just had really junky, these are like Princess Auto, that's like $50 set from one and three eighths to two inch. Unfortunately, these were only eighth increment sizes. I didn't have the sixteenths. I was gonna buy them eventually, but I actually didn't use them all that much. I mostly use my crescent wrenches instead. And then I've got a Craftsman set from five sixteenths up to inch and a quarter. 
Bottom drawer is pretty much empty because I've taken a lot of uh, my other tools out of here. I had a lot of uh, my electronic, imp my electric impacts. I've got a really nice snap on set. Maybe I'll show those in another video. Um, but I do have this uh, light duty uh, slide hammer. Really awesome. This was for actually working on one of my motorbikes. I bought this kit just for that. And then this here is an OTC uh, hub puller, slide hammer, a whole kit. Now this kit on the Mack truck, I believe was like $380. It's actually made by OTC for Mack. And you can buy the, this one here on Amazon. I think it was like 120 bucks or something. So identical, even the box is the same. Just has the, the Mack one had the Mack logo on it. The tray inside is identical. Everything's exactly the same, but you pay much less if you don't care for the Mack name. So. Um, yeah, an engraver, some random stuff. This drawer has been heavily pillaged, so not much to see there. And then this bottom drawer here, these are all different hydraulic gauges that we had for different testing and setting different things, all kinds. Everything that goes up to like 3,000 PSI to 60, we'd use these for different air circuits, uh, hydraulic circuits. And so that's pretty much what this drawer was for, was these gauges that I always needed. Always had them set up in different configurations and uh, for doing testing and setting up machines. And then uh, I kept a bunch of rags in here and gloves. And that's pretty much all I ever had here. Got a set of transfer punches there. But this was just kind of like uh, mostly rags. This is where I'd keep all my rags because we used so many of them. This, I used to have a lot of my pneumatic tools in. The only thing I left here is this pneumatic 3 8 uh, drill. And um, yeah, this was all my pneumatic tools. Die grinders, stuff like that. This was uh, lockout stuff. A uh, set of snap ring pliers that I didn't have room in my regular plier drawer for. I had bought this set and I got laid off probably like two weeks later. So I never actually got to use these, but they're nice to have. This was a tool I found at a garage sale. No clue what it is. So it's a snap on. I imagine it's some type of a ring pliers. It's a little divot in the end. So I'm sure it's for some type of a ring, probably a specialized ring for automotive work. If you know what this is, Maybe let me know in the comments, I'd be curious. Anyways, I got this at a garage sale for like 50 cents the guy wanted, and of course I had to buy it. And then lockout pegs and stuff like that. Gloves, I kept gloves in there. Um, this was all my files and punches and chisels. So, set of snap-on punches and cold chisels. What's this guy falling out of there? Uh, some of my files. Fell out too, come on guys. File card, uh, hole punches, and uh, my files. Round files and a couple gasket scrapers. Uh, there's a little scraper right here. These things were awesome. Use these all the time for cleaning up gaskets on gearboxes and stuff. Uh, big old alignment pin. Use this a lot. And then these here I got from a millwright. We were doing a work in Edmonton, Alberta, at the airport there when they did their new expansion. And he was a millwright from the Appalachian Mountains, and they used to use these to crack the cases of the big turbines there, or as he called it, the Americans usually called a turbine. And uh, anyways, they would get these by the crate load and they're hardened steel. They've got a relief groove in them. And he had a bunch of them. He gave me two of them when he left. And these are some of the most handy tools that I had when I was doing airport baggage conveyors. And also for all kinds of general building, for shimming and, you know, these things can lift and align an incredible amount of weight and uh, pound them back out. And really, really like these things. These are kind of dear tools to me because they were given to me by an old, old uh, millwright that I'd respected. He's about 65, and one of those guys that had stories about stuff he'd worked on, really cool. I value these a lot. And this was my junk, knick-knack drawer, random stuff. Every now and then we'd get some weird fasteners that were always hard to come by or there'd be extras. I knew I'd need it, so I'd save them. And pens and yada yada, inspection mirrors. Um, a temperature gun, temperature probe. Just random stuff. And then this is again, this is all my poor personal accoutrements. So I'd put my wallet and my phone in here. Um, you know, cameras and stuff like that. I took a lot of pictures when I was working. Apprenticeship information. I started a heavy duty mechanic apprenticeship while I was there. Unfortunately, I didn't finish it and I could go back and finish it, I suppose. But this was precision measuring equipment and some of my better quality taps and dies. Only thing left in here now is a Junky tap handle and snap on receipt for 498 bucks. Uh, some measuring stuff again. I had my calipers in here, machinist squares, all kinds of different stuff. Um, drill point gauge for sharpening drill bits. Uh, Starrett, really handy tool to have if you're going to be doing a lot of uh, sharpening of your drill bits by hand. Again, this drawer has been very heavily pillaged. Uh, 
this drawer I had a laptop. Uh, we took pictures of everything. We had all our job files electronically, so I always used the laptop at work. Usually I left it on my toolbox, but I would lock it up in there every now and then. Uh, this here is the Snap-on Tech Toys calendar from 2014. And if you go to May, you will see this dragster, Scarlet Fever. This gentleman right here, Jim Attawell, I worked with him at Sangel. This was his car, and I took all the photographs for this calendar, so that's pretty cool. I, I don't know how it came about. Somehow they found out I was a photographer in my previous job, and anyway, Snap-on paid me like two grand to do this photo shoot for this calendar, so that was awesome, especially when every guy at work had this thing on their toolbox the month of May, and there's just my pictures everywhere, so kind of fun to shoot that. I keep it for uh, memory's sake. And this is a really awesome tool. This is a handheld air vacuum by Bluepoint and it's pneumatic. So you hook your airline up to here and when you pull the trigger, it basically has little jets that blow air into the back here and it creates, I don't know if you'd call that a Venturi. It sounds technical, so we'll go with that. And anyways, it creates a, a vacuum on this end. So without any electricity or anything like that, you can just suck. And the suction that this thing created was really impressive. You can just take this little slider bar off the bottom, clean out all the junk that was inside your little bag and um, we would use this a lot when, say if we had this hydraulic tank and we'd have, you know, several hundred gallons of hydraulic oil in them and the tank would have a leak on the bottom, one of the flanges or something would have a leak and what we would do is we'd seal it off, we'd stick this vacuum in the top where we'd fill it up and create, get a good nice seal there and we could actually turn the vacuum on and with it running we could take off like a two inch flange on the bottom of the tank and it would just suck the air and we could change those out without draining the hydraulic tank and without dripping like a drop of oil so that was the only reason i bought this and i really didn't use it much for cleaning anything but mostly just for the times that we had to or if there's like you know something wrong with hydraulic tank or even a, a fuel tank sometimes there'd be um, a diesel tank you could you could do that and and create suction and it just suck air through nothing would leak out and you could swap out whatever parts you needed to really awesome tool and here I have my hammer collection I'm a really big fan of these dead blow ball peens from snap-on I've got three of them the biggest being what is this one a 32 ounce and then uh, the sizes don't matter but large medium and small work awesome uh, snap-on dead soft face soft faced dead blow handy tool to have uh, I've had this Husky dead blow hammer for probably 15 or 20 years. I think I bought this one in Colorado, in Eagle, Colorado. I like that tool. This is pretty much identical to the S-Wing version. A uh, small S-Wing five pound sledgehammer, and then with these large Wilton uh, sledgehammers, I think that's a seven pound maybe. Uh, these ones, they claim that they're unbreakable. Well, that's only a four pound, what am I thinking? Um, uh, unbreakable and they really are like we beat on stuff a lot of these hoses we had to hook up with the hammer unions man we would beat a lot with those really good tools and then I kept tape measures in here and then the last drawer here is my angle grinder it's pretty much all I ever kept in this drawer um, I have a lot of angle grinders at home so I leave this one here um, I got two guards uh, I ended up getting two because I was gonna modify one cut it down a little bit just never got around to it and then of course I got the different accoutrements and different nuts and spacers for whatever type of a cutting disc you're gonna use the side of here this was a home act side cabinet and uh, I put this on this box, it was just a slight modification, it just kind of hangs on there and I've got a little piece of gasket material to protect the paint on my mat. But these were really handy for a lot of the jobs we had, like the different drawings and, and things we were doing. I could keep some, you know, PPE in here. These machineries handbooks, absolutely awesome. I would say that if you're into making things and building things, they've got at least a few of their line of books that are really going to apply to you. And uh, so I've got like the rotating equipment book, uh, hydraulics handbook, um, metal trades handbook. So this will give you all kinds of information, metallurgical information, welding information, all kinds of stuff. Now I have more at home too, and then what is this one? This is an industrial trades handbook. So everything from like gears and, and pulley drives and you know, even like on a belt drive system, what should your uh, deflection your, your be, you know, what percentage, um, everything you can imagine. The allowable shaft run out of different applications, the engagement, how to check for proper engagement of, of teeth when you're, you know, you're lining up bearings and all kinds of amazing information in there. These things would save so much time and information that you just, 
you can know a lot of it if you do a lot of the same thing. Stuff you learn in trade school, but you just don't really remember the exact formulas for. All right here, easy to use and convenient. I highly recommend these IPT's industrial handbooks. Really, really awesome. And then I'd keep like uh, winter gear and stuff like that. And this is usually where I'd put my lunch, have a few like blue point lights. These things are awesome. Um, really like these. Good little lights. Fire extinguisher, I kept this there for personal use. Um, never really use that at work. This is just here in the shop. And then all my, oops, all of my snap-on receipts, catalogs, you know, rigging information. This is all just paperwork stuff. Stickers that I was collecting. I'm a big sticker guy. Uh, another one of those Tech Toys calendars with my pictures in it and just various information, snap-on catalogs. Uh, sometimes I'd make little templates out of this gasket material for this was a certain like a uh, hydraulic solenoid starter block and uh, This way I could just lay it on the on the trailer Mark my holes drill it without actually having to get the part out yet So I could prep everything get my parts and then simply bolt everything up, you know different manifold blocks for pressures and return lines and stuff like that and uh, Inside here obviously clipped this this was for just whatever paperwork I had going on uh, my tunes, a uh, pretty laid back shop. We could listen to a lot of radio, and so I did that. This was my snap on clock that doesn't work anymore. It's a free clock if you buy like two grand worth of snap on or something like that that day. I don't know. And then aside the here, I put some hooks so I could keep my hard hat, um, other extension cords. In the back here, I did a power bar. This went to my laptop. And I'd have that plugged in for my laptop. Sorry, this one here. Uh, this one obviously for my radio. And then I would have my snap-on battery chargers mounted just sitting up here. And I would use those and always keep them ready. Uh, I've got a creeper hanger for the back of my box. This is a snap-on big boy. Absolutely the best creeper uh, I have found. Nice large casters so that, you know, if there's little rocks or zip ties on the ground, you'd roll right over them. Only two, a lot of the... A lot of the, the uh, creepers have six wheels. This one's only four wheels, which I kind of preferred. And then on the back here, I have this is a, a set that I'm quite proud of. I like this. Oh, I'm gonna have to unlock it. So this is a snap on pry bar holder, and it's nice because it doesn't take uh, room in, in your toolbox. And uh, so I've got this set, these awesome adjustable snap on. Uh, pry bars these things are fantastic and I bought the full set so I've got a little small like up to a teeny little guy like this all the way to a big bohem like this and these things are invaluable I use these all the time guys would borrow these all the time because they're adjustable um, you know when you're working with heavy heavy equipment a lot of times we could play something with a crane and you know we'd be within a quarter of an inch and sometimes we'd have to do these little little tiny alignments that you couldn't do accurately enough while the load was suspended so as we were lowering it we could use these reach in there and put a lot of force on something to get it to line up and not be in harm's way so those things are awesome tools and then also these um, impact pry bars too um, again I've got the full set so from quite large and these have the impact uh, end on them so you can hammer on them and beat on them and then all the way down to this nice little tiny size here for prying. Prying is one of the most useful actions when you're assembling things and you're making things and uh, it's nice when you actually have the right tools rather than using a screwdriver or something like that. Uh, other than that this was a tool I confiscated from a guy. This is his blow gun for blowing snow off units but actually illegal in Canada to have a a uh, non-momentary on-off switch on an air tool like this for blowing. So as a safety guy, I had to take this from the guy. And I asked my boss, where do you want it? And he just said, put it in your toolbox. So that's where it stayed. Um, one of these, uh, this was a large Allen wrench that we used for a certain bolt. And I didn't need too many of them. Uh, I didn't need the whole large set, but this was a common size. And then one of my favorite tools that I've owned over the years. I've had this for years and years and years. This is a Craftsman. Just one of these, I don't even know what they call them. It's like an alignment bar on the end with this hook here. A really valuable tool. I use these a lot for doing airport conveyors and uh, even other stuff. Less on the, on the bigger equipment that I was working on, but I, I, this is one of those tools I really like because I've used it for so long in my life. Um, yeah, and then obviously I have calendars and whatnot. And that is pretty much my 
my big toolbox. This, I'm really proud of this toolbox. I love this toolbox. All right, guys, well, there's a look at my uh, toolbox, uh, my Pride and Joy toolbox, and uh, thanks for watching. You know, I understand that this may not be the best video in the world. This might not get all that many views compared to other videos. And when you have a YouTube channel, you know, you, you see what does well and what doesn't. You kind of try to maybe tailor it more towards uh, what has been successful and what people are enjoying to watch. But then there's also that same part of me that is kind of like, you know what, what do I like to watch on YouTube? And toolboxes and guys toolbox tours are actually something I really enjoy. And for that reason, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna make my own. This may not be by any means a very popular video. Uh, in fact, it's probably not gonna get many views at all, but I don't care. It's, you know, I appreciate the one guy that put his toolbox tour up there. And maybe, you know, if he enjoys looking at toolboxes, he'll enjoy this. So certainly I know there's not a huge reach for a video like this, but Anyways, this was Tool Time Tuesday. Thanks for watching. Obviously, if you're stuck around this long, it couldn't have been that bad, or maybe it was, and you're just, I, I don't know. Anyways, guys, we'll get back at some more knife-making content soon, and uh, till then, thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.